What's up everybody, this is Maddie Mo, and today we're going to be talking about how to improve or optimize your Wi-Fi connection. Regardless of whether how old or new your router seems to be, these tips and tricks work for everybody. The first thing we need to consider is router placement. A router broadcasts signals in every single direction. So imagine like a globe or a sphere surrounding that router. If you're inside that area, you're actually gonna receive a Wi-Fi signal. If you're not, you're not gonna receive one. So the best place to place that router is somewhere in the middle of the house. And if you really could, hang it from the ceiling, let it hang from the air. Now obviously this is not feasible for most people, so the next best option would to be place it on a desk or wall mounted on the side of a wall. Just make sure that wall is not load bearing. Also avoid putting the router on the floor, inside a cupboard, or an enclosed area. Think of the router as a plant, it needs sunlight, it has to breathe, but just don't water. And finally, avoid placing the router beside materials that contain stone, concrete, or bricks. These types of materials don't allow Wi-Fi signals to penetrate them too well. The second thing you want to take into consideration is the actual software or firmware that's installed on the router. Sometimes routers get shipped out with firmware that's kind of glitchy and then a few weeks later or a few months later they release new firmware to update those glitches. And sometimes those glitches cause Wi-Fi problems. So the best thing to do is log onto your router using your admin username and password, which I hope you changed when you first got your router, check the status or the about page of the actual router itself to see what version of firmware that your router is currently using. Then visit the manufacturer's website to find out what the latest version of firmware is for your router. Download and install it and see if that solves your problem. The third thing you can do is change the channel for your router or your access point. Now the way your signals travel across an open area is through frequencies. Most routers support two different frequencies, the 2.4 GHz frequency and the 5.0 GHz frequency. If you're using an older router, then most likely it only supports 2.4. And that's usually common with 802.11b and g. Now if you're using a newer router that supports 802.11n or AC, then you're gonna have backwards capabilities to support 2.4 and be able to use the newer frequency of 5.0. Now this is for the people who are using an older router. If you're using an older router, the first thing you wanna do is scan the area for other networks. Now remember, when you scan the area, you're not gonna be seeing any baby monitors, cordless phones or microwaves. They won't be detected, but at least you'll be able to see other Wi-Fi networks in your vicinity. Once you find out what Wi-Fi networks are in your vicinity, change the channel that it's on. The 2.4 gigahertz range only supports three channels, one, six, and 11. So if you have too many networks around you, this is gonna be quite the problem. Now, if you live in a condo and apartment building, this is especially true. And I recommend actually upgrading your router to something more relevant. Now for everybody else who has a newer router, what I suggest you do is actually split up your frequencies. So put all your older devices on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency and all your newer devices on the 5.0 gigahertz frequency. You're actually creating two separate networks using the same router. So by separating the frequencies, you can put all your old stuff on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency, which won't cause problems with some of your newer devices that you use more commonly. Also the 5 gigahertz range has 23 channels opposed to the three channels at the 2.4 gigahertz frequency has. Not only that, if you're connected to the 5 gigahertz frequency, you're going to get faster speeds and it's also going to reduce the amount of battery that it drains on the device that you're using. Also, the 5 gigahertz frequency doesn't travel as far. So if you're in a condo or an apartment, this won't matter as much and it won't interfere with other networks as easily. The fourth thing you want to try is to adjust your antennas or possibly buy an external one. Now, by adjusting your antennas, your mileage may vary. So if your antennas are pointing vertically, the Wi-Fi signal is going to go out more horizontally. If your Wi-Fi antennas are pointing horizontally, the penetration is going to go upwards and downwards. Now, if that doesn't work, which most likely it won't for most people, the other option is to buy an external antenna. I recommend looking at a high gain antenna. This works only if you can actually unscrew the current antennas that are attached to your router right now. High gain antennas are a lot more potent and will allow you to push the signal further. Now the final option is to actually go out and buy a power line or use a repeater. Now if you don't know what a power line is, it's basically these two little plugs that plug into the wall. You plug the closest one to your router and a network cable attaches to the back of that plug into the back of your router. And what happens is that power line uses the electrical in your house kind of as like a network cable. Now you take the other power line and place it in a room that's not getting the signal. Power lines are really, really effective if you have a lot of materials or walls that are in the way, and no matter what you do, you can't get a signal in that specific room or area. I'm actually using a power line right now, and it's giving me fantastic results. Now, if you're gonna be using a repeater, and I don't recommend buying one, because I think power lines are a better option, don't buy a wireless repeater. 
What you're doing basically with a wireless repeater is basically boosting a signal that's already weak. And all you're doing is boosting that weak signal to another room, which is overall giving you even a weaker signal. So if you're gonna buy a repeater, I would still recommend buying a pad or a power line and then connecting that repeater to the other power line in that room that doesn't have a signal, kind of giving you like a separate wireless network. So those are my five tips and tricks to help optimize your Wi-Fi network. There's also one thing I'd like to mention. If possible, try and hide the name of your Wi-Fi network. You know that SSID that you set up to give your wireless network a name? There's also an option to let you hide it. This will help people not connect to your network because they won't be able to see it unless they actually manually type in the name. Now, of course, this won't stop or stop or prevent an experienced hacker, but at least it'll deter some people from trying to connect to your network. I hope these tips were helpful. If you think there are any other ways to help optimize your Wi-Fi network, please let me know in the comments below. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and share this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. And I'll see you guys in the next one.